The Word of God has a tremendous impact and a tremendous role, both in the life of a preacher and also in the lives of just the church, in the lives of Christians. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, the section of Scripture we're going to think about in this episode is verse 11 through verse 16, Paul gives some some great guidance to a younger preacher, to Timothy. I don't know at this point that he was, you know, I don't know that he was like 20. Some of the sources I was reading said that maybe he's in his early to mid-30s, uh, but In comparison to Paul, certainly still a younger preacher. And Paul tells him, beginning in verse 11, command and teach these things. The things that Paul's been telling him. He's emphasized to him back in verse 6 of 1 Timothy 4. If you put these things before the brothers, you'll be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. So he's been emphasizing to him Uh, in the first few verses of this chapter that some will depart from the faith and they will go after false teachings. And so Paul has been emphasizing to Timothy in this book as well as he will do again in 2 Timothy the importance of remaining true to what God has said and in proclaiming and teaching what God has said. And he says, command and teach these things. Timothy, the authority behind what you preach and teach It's not your ideas, it's not your opinions, it's not your thoughts. It's you are teaching and preaching the Word of God, what God himself has said. Preach and teach these things. And he says back in verse 12, 1 Timothy 4 verse 12, let no one despise you for your youth or let no one look down on you for your youth. In that culture, in that time period, I was reading a, a section from Wayne Jackson's book on First and Second Timothy. I think the book is called Before I Die. But he wrote, In that culture, a man was considered still to be a youth until the age of 40. So Timothy, in all likelihood, is at least under 40 years old at this point, still would be considered by many to be a youth. And so there would be this, you know, if you're if you think about young people having ideas and trying to get maybe older or more wiser experienced people to do them what's the tendency you know young well let's just put it in the realm of politics you know young people have ideas about the world of politics what tends to happen and and generally sometimes to, to be totally honest and to be totally fair sometimes some of the younger people's ideas in the world of politics are not very good ideas they're 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 ideas that would not do very well if they were put into action. So there's, so there is some uh, some merit to not always listening to what a younger person has to say. But remember, with Timothy, while he is younger, he's just telling people what God's word says. So while yes, the one telling you this is younger, it's not his thoughts. It's not his opinions. He's telling you what God has said. So Paul says, don't let anyone look down or despise you for your youth. But Timothy, here's what you do. But set the believers an example. And he mentions five things. In speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. In speech, the way that you talk, Timothy, set an example to all the other Christians by the way that you talk, by the things that you say. Certainly say things that are truthful, but also... This would have to do with the way you talk to people. But also, not only in the way you talk, but also in your conduct, in how you act and live. These first two, in speech and in conduct, it sort of focuses on the external. What people see externally, they what they hear you say, what they see you do, be an example in the way that you live. But also, internally, who you are, your character. He says, in love, this is a a decision to love sacrificially, a decision to to seek out the best for someone else. He says, in faith, this is the idea of trustworthy and loyal. By the way that you live your life, people see that you, you are loyal to God. You do not stray from Him, but you love other people regardless of how they treat you, and you seek their best. Maybe even some of the ones who are looking down on you, you seek their best. 
you are show, you are someone who shows yourself to be trustworthy in that what you say is, you know what, what he's saying, this is what God has said. Um, and he's someone who's loyal to God. You be loyal to God. And then in purity, it says moral excellence in both motives and in action. Don't have these ulterior motives. Be pure in your motives and be pure in your life. Don't have these sins that you hide and cover up in your life. So Paul says, you, Timothy, because of how young you are, you may very well have people look down on you or sort of, you know, they're not so sure about you because you're so much younger than they are. But Timothy, what you can do to, to help with that, you know, you're not going to change people's thinking on you overnight. But if you'll come in and you will be an example to all the Christians by the way that you talk, by the way that you live, in your love, in your faith, and in purity, he says, do these things. And then continuing on in verse 13, he says, until I come, so Paul hoped to be able to come where Timothy was. He says, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Timothy, as a a Christian and as a young preacher, a young teacher of God's Word, he was to devote himself to publicly reading the Scriptures. Now, this is something I suppose in many ways our our sermons today include this, but a lot of times what they would do, because you might have, you would maybe go to, in the Old Testament times, you'd go to the temple or you'd go to the synagogue, and there'd be one copy. You know, you'd have one scroll. It's not that every, you know, everyone didn't bring their own personal scroll with them. There was one. And what would often happen is there would be these large sections of Scripture read, maybe Maybe they would read a couple chapters of the Psalms or a couple chapters out of Isaiah. And there would be these large sections read. And then what would often happen is from that, the one who was reading, or maybe it would be someone else, would get up then and based on what was read, here's the exhortation. Here's, uh, we might say, here's how you put this into action in your life. And it was encouragement and comfort based on what was read. Here's how what this says about God comforts us. Or here's how what this says about uh, the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt and how they turned aside and they complained and they went after idols. Here's what that teaches us about what we should not do in our lives. So there would be that, but then there would also be teaching. Maybe there would be sections of that scripture that were read that were a, a bit more challenging to understand. You know, we heard what was said, we heard what was read, but what did that mean? What's that actually mean? The person would also teach. They would explain the meaning of what had been read. And so Paul tells Timothy, Timothy, your young preacher, here's what you devote yourself to. You devote yourself to the public reading of God's Word. Certainly read it for yourself, but this is about more than Timothy. This is about other people hearing the Word of God. And Timothy you encourage people how to live godly lives and teach them, here's what God's Word means. He tells him in verse 14, do not neglect the gift that you have. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Perhaps this may be referring to some miraculous gift of the Holy Spirit that Timothy had, There in the first century, um, the apostles would lay hands on people and they would receive, this person that the apostles laid hands on would receive a miraculous gift of the Holy Spirit, perhaps the ability to speak in tongues or heal, something like that. You can find a list of these. Well, you find them especially kind of laid out in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, And there's a list of all of them given in one of those two chapters. I'm kind of pulling that off the top of my head. But I know 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14 deals with a lot of that in depth. Um, And so Paul tells Timothy, don't neglect the gift that you have. So maybe he's talking about a miraculous gift. Maybe he's not talking about a miraculous gift here. Um, One resource I was reading pointed out that maybe the, the position that Timothy had been put in, you know, he is in this this preaching, teaching position, and he's perhaps what Paul is saying is, look, you know, you've kind of, 
you have an important opportunity and an important task ahead of you to teach, to read and teach and to comfort people according to God's Word. Don't, don't neglect this opportunity that you have in front of you. That was one source had kind of pointed it out. Maybe that's also what Paul's getting at, and maybe it's a combination of the two. But basically, Paul is telling Timothy, look, you know what you have in front of you to do, and I know that you know what you should do. Don't, don't shy away from doing what ought to be done, perhaps because some were despising his youth, and maybe Timothy would feel discouraged, or maybe he would feel like, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, uh, perhaps for other reasons. But for whatever reason, Paul encourages Timothy, don't, do not neglect do not turn aside from doing what you know needs to be done. He says, practice, verse 15, practice these things. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. It's interesting the way Paul phrases this. Practice these things. Do these things. Um, let this be a part of who you are every day. Practice this. Be devoted to it. Immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress, probably pointing back up to what he said earlier in the chapter. Let no one look down on you because you're young, but be an example. He says, if you will practice these things I'm telling you, if you will immerse yourself in them, immerse yourself in God's Word, and applying it in your life and helping other people, other people will see your progress. And it once again, it builds that trust that you have with them. And then verse 16, and kind of closing out this section, Paul tells him to keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. Keep on doing this. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Timothy, as a young preacher, he says, Timothy, closely watch yourself and what you're teaching. And... This isn't just something you need to occasionally keep an eye on, but keep on persisting in this. Keep on examining and keeping a close watch on yourself and the things that you're teaching. And by doing that, Timothy, you will save your own soul, you will save yourself, and you will save those who hear you. And now kind of the, I guess what stood out to me about that section is obviously as, I guess you could say, a younger preacher, in fact, someone who... At the time of recording this, I'm probably around Timothy's age. I'm early 30s. What I was reading was saying that Timothy's probably somewhere in his early to mid-30s. And what Paul is emphasizing to Timothy is really two things. Timothy, in your work as a preacher, in your work as a teacher of God's Word, you need to be devoted to God's Word. You need to know what it says, and you need to immerse yourself in Scripture and reading it and studying it and understanding it. And then what you need to do is you need to apply it to your own life. You don't need to learn God's Word and then ignore what it means in your life. You need to live a life that is an example to others, the way you talk, the way you treat other people, the way you live in love and faith and purity. You need to You need to take the things that God says, and you need to obey them. And then, Timothy, you need to teach those things to other people. The Word of God is the the central, I guess, hub or the central point in what Paul is telling Timothy. And this is true. Certainly it's true to, I guess, what we think of as full-time preachers. But also, for every individual Christian, this is true. What God's Word says is something that we must put into practice in our own lives. We must obey what He says. We must, James talks about in James chapter 1, how we must look into the mirror of God's Word and we must do what He's told us. We must submit our lives to Him. And when we realize that something is wrong in our lives, we must be willing to change that. I think that's James 1 verse about 21 or 22 down through about verse 25, that James makes that point. And so the Word of God is its not something that we should set aside, or it's not something that should be just the occasional thing we read. You know, I've got 
I've got a lot of books. I have a lot of books, and one thing that I'm really bad at is I'll pick up a book, and I will read it maybe a third of the way in, and then I lose interest. Or what I'll do is I'll, I've got a book I was reading just earlier, is I'll read this, and then I'll come back to it maybe two weeks later, and I'll maybe read another chapter. And then I'll come back to it two or three weeks later, and I'll read another chapter. It's like I read it, but it's this just occasional... You know, when I see it, it's like, oh, I'll go read that again just to have something to do. God's Word is not supposed to be just that occasional, you know, I haven't picked up the Bible in two weeks. It'd probably be good for me to go read a verse or two. Like, that's not, it's not supposed to be just this occasional when I don't have anything else to do kind of thing. No, it's our entire life is supposed to be centered around what God has said in His Word. So it's not supposed to be just the occasional thing, or just part of who we are. But the Word of God, what God tells us, our entire life, every aspect of our life, is supposed to be built upon what God has said and what God has told us in His Word. That's true for preachers. That's true for every member of the Lord's church, for every single Christian. And so, as we thought about 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11 through 16, I hope we've been reminded the importance of God's Word and the importance not just of studying it and knowing what it says, but also the importance of as we grow and learn in our understanding of God's Word and our understanding of Jesus Christ and what He has done for us, that we will live our lives according to what God has said.